Good afternoon. Once again, breaking news. There is that verdict in the trial of a Jupiter father charged with child abuse for locking his son in a box-like room in the garage. Let's go live into the courtroom and listen in. This is Judge Howard Coates. In the Circuit Court of the 15th Judicial Circuit, Criminal Division in and for Palm Beach County, Florida, case number 22-CF-001136, BMB Division B, State of Florida versus Timothy Dunn Ferreter, defendant. Verdict. We the jury find as follows. As to count one, we find the defendant guilty of aggravated child abuse as charged in the information. As to count two, we find the defendant guilty of false imprisonment as charged in the information. As to count three, we find the defendant guilty of neglect of a child as charged in the information. So we say all this 12th day of October, 2023 in West Palm Beach, Florida, signed by the jury for a person. All right, does either side wish to have the jury polled? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, there's been a request to have the jury polled, and that simply means that each of you will be asked the question of whether the verdict is your verdict or not. If it is, you should only answer yes. If it is not, of course, you should answer no and nothing further. So, Madam Clerk, at this time, if you could please poll the jury. Juror one, were the verdicts as read your verdicts? Yes. Juror two, were the verdicts as read your verdicts? Yes. Juror three, were the verdicts as read your verdicts? Juror four, were the verdicts as read your verdicts? Yes. Juror five, were the verdicts as read your verdicts? Yes. Juror six, were the verdicts as read your verdicts? Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen uh, of the jury, at this time, this concludes your uh, service uh, to your community in this matter. I want to thank you uh, for the time and commitment that you've made to this case. It went a lot longer than uh, I'd originally estimated. Um, but in any event, um, I watched all of you during the course of the trial. You did exactly what I had requested. You stayed focused and tuned into the evidence during all uh, phases of the case. Um, and I hope everyone has a much better appreciation of the, um, the great responsibility that comes with serving as a juror um, in our community. So with that, I do want to thank you. My bailiff will give you a letter of thanks from me. Also, a um, certificate of appreciation from the Palm Beach County Bar Association and a short little survey that I'll just ask that you return it um, when you get some time. Uh, other than that, I do wish the best to all of you. And with that, you're excused. And Mark, you may escort the jurors out. All right, everyone may be seated. All right, uh, Ms. Coakley, anything that I need to address as far as, far as adjudication in accordance with the verdict? Uh, no, he, would, uh, he doesn't have a prior adjudication, but it is uh, aggravated child abuse is a first degree felony, so we'd re uh, request adjudication at this time. We'd also ask that he be remanded into custody at this time, okay. pending sentencing. Ms. Murad? Your Honor, I would request that the court, as to him being remanded, um, he has been out of custody for two years without any issues or any violations of bond. If the court is inclined to remand him, my request is that the court um, put him on a monitor. He does have a place that he can live in Palm Beach County. He has no criminal record whatsoever, and he has no custody of any of the children. Okay. All right, so the court, I'm going to adjudicate the defendant in accordance with the um, uh, verdict guilty of the charge of aggravated child abuse, guilty of the charge of false imprisonment, and guilty of neglect. At this time, I'm going to remand the defendant to the custody of the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department. That's without prejudice for you to file any type of motion that you deem appropriate, Ms. Murad, for pretrial release or, or, or release during um, pending appeal. Um, this ruling today is without prejudice for me to receive that and consider that at the appropriate time. Um, let me get an idea as to what the state is looking for in terms of a sentencing hearing. I can do it as soon as the defense can be ready. He is entitled to a PSI. I don't know what, what the defense's position is as to that. I will waive PSI, Your Honor. This is a sentencing that I should be able to get done relatively quickly. 
um, should the court have time in two or three weeks? I'll make whatever time that um, I have to 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 you know, expedite sentencing if that's what both sides request. That's fine, Your Honor. Well, um, I won't need more than um, 20 or 30 minutes for my presentation. All right, so Ms. Murad, um, I would need you, an hour to hour and a half. So I'm going to set aside two hours for sentencing, and uh, Kentia, let's pick a date um, on an afternoon uh, for two-hour setting. Um, no more than no no earlier than three weeks out. That should be enough time for you to do what you have to do, Ms. Murad. But no more than five weeks. So in that two-week period there, let's uh, pick a two-hour setting. Thursday, November 16th. At All right. Does that date work for everybody? November 16th for sentencing. For the state. All right, I can just have one second to get to that. Yes, uh, you said Thursday or uh, Monday? Thursday, November 16th. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at October, so sorry. Yes, that is fine with the state. All right, so the sentencing of this matter is set for Thursday, November 16th, that, uh, what was the time, 2.30? 1.30, two hours reserved. All right, anything else that the court needs to address before we adjourn? We are going to need to do a status. I know Ms. Marshall is in here. We're going to need to do a status check because I don't think we have a future date on Ms. Ferreter. Can um, we do it the same day as the sentencing? That'd be fine uh, if you're good with that. I might, I might reach out to Ms. Marshall about having something next, um, having it next week so we can get. Um, Whenever you want to come in, will be fine with okay. me. Um, the morning, morning docket, as you know, is generally pretty heavy. So one more, one more hearing is not going to make a huge difference. Okay. All right. So. Um, then that t concludes the court's business today. I do want to thank both sides for, for a professionally presented case. We had a couple hiccups here and there, but over the course of an eight-day trial, uh, that's to be expected. But um, thanks to both sides for the um, commendable job that each of you did. All right, thank you. Remanded zero bond, but that's without prejudice. Uh, for, you are watching uh, live the court proceedings, the, the guilty order. verdict for Timothy Farreter, the Jupiter father charged with locking his I son in a box him. in a garage. As you just heard it announced, he has been found guilty that, that on all so counts, guilty of aggravated child, child abuse. Court. That is a first degree felony, so false imprisonment and neglect of a child. He now faces 40 years in prison. This is his wife, Tracy Farreter. She was also charged with child abuse. She is going to be tried at a separate time. Timothy Farreter just gave his wife a hug goodbye because he is now going into custody. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies will take him into custody and he will now be in jail. He's been out right now as he's been awaiting uh, his trial. He was arrested in February of last year. He and his wife uh, keeping their son a middle schooler in an eight foot by eight foot box in the garage for much of the day. Their son, who is now 16 years old, testified against his father. He said that he did not blame his parents for their actions and said they were just responding to his bad behavior. Again, you're watching now Timothy Farreter being fingerprinted here in the courtroom. His sentencing will be Thursday, November 16th. And again, he uh, was offered a plea agreement before his trial that would have sent him to jail for just two years. And now he does face 40 years in prison. He showed very little emotion when that verdict was read and that verdict came back quickly. Uh, jurors just started deliberating this morning. They watched some testimony of one of the victim's sisters. They rewatched that for about an hour and a half. And then shortly after they came back with this verdict shortly after one o'clock this afternoon, guilty on all three counts. We, of course, are going to get reaction from defense attorneys, from the prosecutors, and we'll have the very latest for you on this case coming up in just about two hours on WPBF 25 News at 4 o'clock.